just need to invest into uh, early child development, early family intervention. We've also created, in fact, we're doing the opposite of what we need to do. We continue as a state to cut after school programs, to cut activity programs within elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. And so I, I gotta tell you a funny story. And my wife, you know Jackie, Jackie's like a little feisty. She's like, do you ever listen to me? <laughs> so about two weeks ago, I'm literally, I have Asher as a great artist, right? Nine year old, second grade, great artist. And in our kitchen, we have the kids' artwork and frames and stuff like that, and we exchange them all the time. So I asked Asher the other day, which you know our kids, I asked Asher the other day, I said, Asher, I said, so when are you bringing Daddy some new artwork? <laughs> and he says, next year, Daddy. School I, year's over. No, no, no. Why? Well, this is still going through school. I see. And he says, well, next year, Daddy. I go, well, you bring it home every Wednesday. He goes, no, Dad, we have, we have art next year. I go, no, you have art on Wednesdays. He goes, no, Dad, we have science on Wednesdays. Art was last year. I didn't realize as a father that my kids in elementary school get art every other year. Now, what Jackie reminded me of, that's what she goes, do you ever listen to me? I didn't realize our kids, Jackie had basically put our kids in an after-school art program. So our kids still get art because we're very fortunate and blessed that my wife and we can afford to put our kids into an after-school program that we pay for. But the majority of our kids can't. So we have cut so many of those opportunities out for our children that they don't, they don't stay engaged in schools. So you wonder why we have such a dropout rate. I want you to think about this. Every state west of Illinois, Texas, every state, 83 to 95% high school graduation rates, and we're at 68%. We have to fix work. that. Yeah, we have to fix that. It's interesting you bring up the schools, and, and I'm curious about, you know, the drug problems. You know, we've not, that's the biggest problem in, in our area, northern New Mexico. What would you think that you could do to well, prevent or help? You know, it starts in, at the home. Absolutely. Well, I think there's a, th and again, there's almost phases we have to go through. So, so the first phase is I think if we start early child development, early family intervention, and help these younger kids or younger parents that are having kids, let's help them right now, right? Because it's a lot cheaper here than over here when they're 18 or 20, right? So I think doing that, I think we talked about it as we, as we actually, we need to add more activities and programs into middle schools, elementary schools, and high schools to keep our kids engaged. What's happened is we've cut so many of those after activity programs out that our kids don't stay engaged. So what do they do? They get into drugs. But they start getting other things. Now, here's another, here's another thing we're going to work with. According to what I've read, according to what the experts have told me, 25 to 30 percent of people incarcerated in the state of New Mexico are incarcerated on minor drug possessions, marijuana possessions, some kind of minor possessions. We spend between 130 and $160 million a year incarcerating them. Then we let them out every 6 to 18 months. I don't know about you, my company will not let me hire them. So now they can't get Drug jobs. Test. Right, they can't get truck. They can't, they either have a record. Although unless you work for Uber, I mean, they, with the new laws in the state of New Mexico, you don't have to have a drug test, and so, you know, well, or but, alcohol. But my point is, corporate America, most companies won't hire people with records or those kind of issues. So my point is, is our plan is, instead of incarcerate them, let's take the same amount of money and let's create um, rehab and training programs for job skills, and let's do it for two years. It's the same amount of money. But even if you have a 50% success rate, and then when they get done with their drug rehab, then when they get done, done with their, drug, their, their uh, job skills, we put them in jobs that we know exist today. There are 41,000 jobs today, trade skill jobs today in the state that we subcontract out of state or go on field. Why? Because we've cut so many programs out, we've not, we've not, um, we've not trained our kids. Uh, I was up in, and I know I'm running, please interrupt me. No, no, if you please, wanna. I'm enjoying this, so go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> um, we were up, Jackie and I and the boys were up in Chama, really a month ago. And we were visiting with Isn't some. Isn't it gorgeous It's up beautiful. There? Yeah. A, 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 a jewel that we don't capitalize on. Exactly. And, a and, jewel and we don't capitalize on. Think about the train. That train needs... I mean, people to go ride the train, but the governor cut that program. All those programs. I think it was about two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And and well, again, we, 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 we would prob we would probably make ten million dollars if we got the train going and promoted it the right way in tourism. 
Again, business guy, let's look at the ROI, let's look at investing into ourselves, and how can we grow Chama, how can we grow that area, and, 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 and tourism. But let me tell you, so there's two friends of ours that have places up there, and they're having problems with, I need an electrician, I need a plumber, I need this, I need that. Literally, I met a gentleman up there the other day that's building a new house up in Chama. His entire crew, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Another gentle friend of mine who says, I haven't been able to build, uh, redo my cabin up there. He goes, Jeff, there's, there's no skilled workers up here. I'm going to have to bring them in from Albuquerque or go to... Uh, or go well, to everybody's moved away. It's not that you can't find skilled labor in Chama. It's just that everybody's moved away. But that's what Kids I'm saying. Kids leave. But that's my you point, know. is if, if we invested into Chama sure, and, really in, and really invested into, and that's just one example of many examples we can look around the state, but if we invested into Chama, into that they area, on tourism, the private capital would come in to start construction jobs, but then we have to make sure the workforce is there and we have to go into our middle schools and high schools and train our n local New Mexican kids to do those jobs. So we continue cutting those programs away. So those are the programs that we're actually going to bring back and make sure our kids have the skills for plus, those. Plus, there's such a shortage of educators. I mean, they don't get paid enough. Who, you know, and it doesn't make sense. You know, we haven't talked too much about this yet, and I'm sure we will. I've talked to, uh, I have a big teaching, uh, I have a bunch of teachers that are, are, are following us and they're supporting us. Um, but I also have kind of like a round table of teachers and educators across the board that are really helping us with that. Under our economic plan, the average person in our public school system that works in our, and not just the teachers, but I'm talking to people, the people that are taking care of our buildings, the people that are cleaning our buildings, everybody, none of them got raises. We pay them such low money that we can't keep people in those jobs. So under our economic plan, on average, six to $8,000 take home a year uh, by year three in our, in, our, in our economic plan. So we have a plan for that. Good, because it, you know there's such a shortage of teachers and you know educators, it's not. I would even consider getting, you know, a degree just to go try to teach in my next life. Not now, of course. You know. Well, and one of the other people that, pe one of the things that people don't talk about is um, what I've been told by some of the unions is in the next four years, 60% of our teachers are going to be eligible for retirement. And, you know, Asher's second grade teacher today just got fed up. And she's actually short of uh, qualifying for her full pension, and she's just tired of the whole system. She's, she, th th this was her last year teaching. She told us a month ago that she wasn't going to teach next year. She can make more money somewhere else. Probably, yeah, absolutely. That's right. I know you, in your background you uh, mentioned you went to school here, but where'd you go to college? And, and then I know you have some green energy technology background um, that we didn't get into, and that's, yeah, that's um, pretty big here. <clears throat> Well, you know, like I said, I, uh, I played football at the University of New Mexico, and I, so I went to UNM. Uh, my dream was to play football, even that I got stricken with cancer. The doctor said I'd never play football again, and I proved him wrong. Uh, came back once I was, once I was recovered. I, I got strong again, got back into, it took me a couple of years, got back into my, into my regiment, and uh, had a great career. Played from 82 to 85. I actually went to SMU in Dallas my first year and a half. Um, and uh, and uh, SMU is one of the universities that was recruiting me when I got sick, and so they stayed they stayed with me uh, even through that, and so uh, so I felt obligated to go there. But then I ended up transferring back here. Uh, you missed home. I missed home, and all my buddies were playing at UNM. All my high school buddies, a lot of my friends that I played against, and some of my friends from Santa Fe, and so came home and uh, and played my last three years at UNM, um, and so I was a UNM grad, and I studied the business side of broadcasting and that's how I got into the broadcast business actually and by the way any young people or parents that they're listening look in college and I think you know this make sure your kids are doing every type of internship they can every type of you know program workers program I don't care if you get paid or not um, I got my career started because I interned at Channel 4 my senior in college and they had a program back then that about every if I recall every three to four weeks they'd move me into a different department Wow um, so you got a feel and a taste for it, and you knew that was mm -hmm. what you wanted to do. And I was studying it, so I, I got to know the business side. I got to know the the production side. <clears throat> you know, in college, I've I've actually, you know, I, I've actually when I what got me into this is I always thought I'd be a sports broadcaster. And uh, and about halfway through my degree, I just realized journalism wasn't something that excited me, but behind the scenes excited me. The business aspect excited me. Growing the business, putting deals together, excited me. And, and now you're the president of 47 LLC, a venture group? 
Yeah, so what I did was I left the media business um, about a year ago. Um, Two, kind of knowing that it's probably going to gear up and run for politics. And as you know, FCCs and stuff like that, I can't really be running news organizations and media stations and running for governor. Um, so I kind of knew it was time for a change. Um, at the same time, uh, Innovate ABQ, um, economic development, I sit on a lot of boards in Albuquerque uh, to bring economic and jobs and create jobs. So I created a consulting company called 47. <clears throat> Everybody thinks it's my football number. It's not. <laughs> and it's not your age. And it's not my age. Um, it's actually we're the 47th state. Ah, nice. And, uh, and that's why I named it. And what, what, what we do is we actually incubate and help small uh, startups uh, in New Mexico to expand and grow but stay in New Mexico. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Um, so that, that's, what, that's what we do. Um, in the meantime, uh, uh, another gentleman, friend of mine, who's an entrepreneur and has started 16 companies, and he's very dedicated, a gentleman named Stu Rose, very dedicated to keeping uh, money, private capital, and startups in New Mexico. So he's doing a lot of stuff on the biotechnology side, um, but him and his team have come up with a new technology to charge, uh, to charge electric cars um, and to charge electric cars. So we're probably a couple months away from having our first uh, prototype station in uh, in Albuquerque, um, and then once we kind of work out Can all the bugs. Can have a big groundbreaking. Well, once we have all the bugs uh, rolled out, then uh, you know, then the next phase of any startup was we have to raise second, third rounds of, of revenue. Uh, but our model is there's a bunch of people in the industry battling it out on the East Coast and the West Coast, um, but it's very hard in the southwestern states, and there's very limited uh, electric charging stations and. We think we can do it faster, better, more convenient. Uh, so we're working on that too. Um, and those are, I guess, my part-time jobs because I'm running for governor. <laughs> that, that's a full-time job, it's and full -time I'm sure job. you're finding out what that's like. You've got to be everywhere, shaking hands, as we say, pressing the flesh, and uh, getting the vote out. What's well, the reception been like? It's been very positive. It's been very positive. I think, uh, look, our research, and there's other polling out there, it's not just our research, shows that 75, 80% of the people, and I'm sure you see it out there, 75, 80 percent of the people are frustrated with our state, the direction of our state. How always being the lowest. Always of being everything. the lowest. Um, as we put it, we're tired of being at the bottom of all the good lists and at the top of all the bad lists, right? Um, and it's time for change. It's time for some new ideas. So everything I've done in business, whether it's sports, my wife Jackie calls me the "what if" guy. You know, by the way, you don't want to watch football on TiVo with me uh, watching <laughs> TV because I always go "what if." Um, and so, um, so I've always said, what if? So what if we invest in New Mexico? What if we invest in ourselves, right, and grow our economy that way? So that's what we're going to do as is, is running for governor. Well, I can't believe we're already running out of time, but I want you to really um, just tell me, you know, why you think you can win and your parents just being at your side is a, a huge perk because you know they again talk a little bit about your your mom and what she's doing she's going to sure uh, hit on the the women's vote and, oh, absolutely. and her credibility I, I think she was just featured in an article or, or in the journal or something i know she's i featured, saved it she, she's featured almost every week somewhere so you know my parents they know i'm not running because of my parents they know i'm not running because of their legacy um, but they're being 100% supportive. Well, naturally. Yeah, um, and so, uh, and I couldn't do it without them. I couldn't do it without my wife and my kids. Uh, so they're being very supportive, and obviously I'm gonna use all the assets I can to, to get elected. Look, I think New Mexico needs a new direction. Um, the people that we've talked to, I just didn't jump in to jump in. I've been talking to people for two years. I've actually gone to our political leaders and said, here's what I'm hearing. Here's some business opportunities. Here's some educational opportunities. Here's what the teachers are telling us. And no one wants to listen. So that's what our campaign's about. It's time we do something a better way. It's time we invest in ourselves, into education. We didn't even talk about healthcare or renewable energies. Our renewable energy be very quickly. Our renewable energy, look, powering houses, powering buildings is gonna be okay. We're gonna power other states. We have the best environment the best um, opportunities in the country to lead in renewable energies, and we don't do that. So we're going to do that and invest in that. We're going to power states, not not just houses and, and buildings. Well, I definitely have seen you in action, and I've pretty much seen you, and I'm usually everywhere in northern New Mexico, um, and you've been there, and, and I really appreciate that, that you're trying to 
to not only make northern New Mexico a better place, but also the state. Right. And, um, you know, I wish you all the luck. And well, thank you. I would ask everybody who's watching your program and yourself, uh, our website is APO18. That's my nickname. Sounds like Apo. Apollo. I know. Well, no, that's good. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Apo, 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 for Apodaca, Apo18.com, or, you know, like us on Facebook or whatever. Um, but follow us. Follow us. What we're going to do, we're going to be lay, laying out our game plan, our economic plan, our educational plan um, over the summer. And, uh, and I think you're talking to the next governor of the state of New Mexico with your help and with your audience help. Well, there you go. There you have it. Thank you very much. And Thanks for having me on. Today. I would like you know you to come back as things progress and we get closer to the election Absolutely. and the date, and that's already next year. It's around the corner. So we wish you again all the luck. Thank you for taking the time thank from you so your much. schedule to be here with me. Well, and thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're 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 such a very good person. It's you know. Thank you. It's that's a given. Anyhow, thank you for watching our program. If you'd like to appear, please call me at eight two seven four five three three. Thank you for watching.